Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Brilliant. Okay, so we're going to have a great time today in a in a really uh, a really really clear session. We've been having some really deep sessions the last few weeks. If you've missed any of the last four or five weeks, I highly recommend them. I've been on a real focus around the egoic agenda and and helping us to understand that there's nothing wrong. We're not broken. That which we currently are experiencing is a a well crafted and elegant uh, end result to aspects of our consciousness and this this uh this idea that creating what we want to create needs to be anything other than able to just have it is is very interesting so something that i'd like to propose uh today is that if what you're creating feels like it's just hard and it's work and you're fighting yourself and it's not, you're not able to just move towards it. There's only one reason why it's hard and you're not able to move towards it with ease. And that's that you created that. And what you've created is a current reality with certain conditions. And what you're noticing is those conditions that you have created are in opposition to what you want. So the only thing you can assume is that there is a unconscious egoic agenda that has a conflicting uh, outcome than what it is that you want to create. That's the only that's the only thing you can assume. If you if you are in a, if you're going for something, just make sure you guys can see this. If you have an end result you're going for here, desired reality, and, and as you're going through it, it's like there's big boulders in the way. It's because there's something that your uh, identity is pushing up. So your identity here is pushing that up into that. That is actually designed by you. Does that make sense? That's designed by you. So. There's also things in your life that you can just create and have with ease. True, you can just create it, you can have it, it's easy, there's no problems. And, and that's, that's something else to really consider. So what I would like to ask you is, what would it, what would it be like if you are able to just create that which you desire without struggle. What would it be like if what you wanted, you were able just to go for it and just have it? What if you didn't have to struggle for it? That's an interesting question, isn't it? What would happen if you didn't have to struggle? How would that be if you could just have it? If you could just go for it. That's our choice. I would choose that for you. I'd choose for you to go to heaven. Now, that doesn't mean that there's going to be things that you have to overcome, like maybe you have to have tough conversations and maybe you have to be rejected and maybe things don't go exactly as you want. However, as those things are happening, you're not bringing all sorts of baggage to it. You're just taking correct action and you're in your end result and it's inevitable. What would that be like? I think that, that that's the natural state of a conscious creator, you see. And it's not that everything would go right all the time. You'd be learning, you'd be figuring things out, but it wouldn't be this continual sort of fight against yourself. You'd be like, oh, okay. You know, like if you were trying to, trying to create something and it didn't work, it would just be like losing a game of Monopoly, you know, or it'd be just like, you know, you, you burnt, you burnt the, the dinner. It wouldn't be, you know what I'm saying? Like the way that you would respond to, you know, putting on an ad campaign and, and the advertising budget not working or being asked for a divorce or, or your kid doing this or whatever it was, it, instead of it being this big thing, it was just like, oh yeah, I just, I just missed, you know, I just didn't quite get it. Can you see how that could be? It'd be very different if it was just like that. 
And so what's interesting as I talk and, uh, and spend a lot of time with a lot of you, for most of us, it, it feels as though we've got to use willpower or manipulate ourselves or do something like we've really got to overcome shit. <laughs> Technical term, really? We've really got to overcome it. And, and what's interesting is because of all this, this stuff, we tend to not take the, uh, the correct action. And so what's, what's really interesting is that action always leads to results, right? Like if we, if we think about it. So the action you take or don't take, including procrastination, which is action. So whatever the action is, A for action. The action leads to a result. And whatever that result is, is. What I've noticed, though, is most of us don't take the action that's needed, or we take a counterintuitive action that's actually going in the wrong direction. And so it's like, even though the action is there, a lot of us don't have the potential to take the action. Where does that potential come from? Well, it comes from your identity. Identity. And so what's interesting is there's an action you need to take. The action that is you're able to take is in your potential. We all have unlimited potential, but our identity caps the potential to what is safe, what is available for us then to act. This then leads to a result. What's interesting is this result then confirms the identity and the identity being um, agendas, egoic agendas, um, feelings, thoughts, also known as beliefs. So thoughts, feelings, beliefs. This is beliefs, thoughts, feelings, agendas, identity. So what's interesting is you have a, a, an identity that is thoughts, feelings, beliefs, what's possible for you, which creates potential. The potential is, is the maximum amount of action that you could possibly take. Does that make sense? It's the, ma the maximum amount of potential you could possibly take. You have to take some action inside of that potential. Whatever that action is, gives you a result. That result is in alignment with your potential. Therefore, it confirms your identity. Does that make sense? Which then locks that potential in even more. So, so here's what's interesting. If you have an identity that increases your potential, that increases, increases the action you can take, that increases the result, which increases your potential. And this cycle moves in a way that the Matthew effect takes into, takes into place. So basically, you have thoughts and feelings and agendas that increase your potential, increases the action you can take, increases the results you can take, which actually reinforces all those agendas and feelings and thoughts and beliefs, and it goes that way. But we also have the opposite can happen. The, the absolute opposite can happen is where... We have, can I make this work? Come on, pen, change color. We also have downward, there we go. We have downward, which then decreases potential, decreases action, decreases result, which decreases and decreases even more, a downward spiral. Does that make sense? And so what's interesting is that we're either increasing potential or capping it. And as we cap it, we take less action, less results. Our identity confirms less results, so we take less potential. So either we're in an upward spiral, right? It's either going bigger, 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 or it's going down, down, down. So I find this really interesting because a lot of times when I'm working with people, they don't take the correct action. And I wonder why. And I wonder why, you know, but then I also wonder it about myself. So for the longest time, I would say to myself that I wanted to create a, a, a fit, healthy, lean, uh, muscular body. And then the action I would take was to eat burgers and chips and drink beers. And I don't know if you know, but those are in opposition uh, of each other. 
But I would, I would want that, but then I would take this. Oh, why, why would I do that? And, and for, for about, a, I don't know, five or six years, I would say I wanted this, but I'd do that. I'd say I wanted this, but I'd do that. I'd say I wanted this, but I'd do that. My wife's in the chat box saying, yes, burgers. <laughs> but then also with money. You know, I'd say that I wanted to be wealthy. And I know in order to be wealthy, you need to make more than you spend. You need to invest it and have money work for you. I know. But what would I do? Credit card debt. Spend more than I make. Like the one rule. To be rich, you have to have more money than you spend. That's it. That's, that's the definition. The, the, the wealthy you are is a difference between how much you need to spend and how much you have. And I would do it the wrong way. I would make this much and have this much debt. So the spiral would be negative. But it's not like I didn't know what I needed to do. I needed to make more than I spent, invest it so that the investment grows so then I don't have to work anymore. Yeah, I know what it is I need to do. And so this was a really fascinating thing is going, okay, right, well, why am I not taking the correct action? The action's laid out there. It's there. It's obvious. This is the actions. This is what needs to happen. I don't think that most of the, I don't think nearly any of our creations that we want to create, we can't figure out the right action. Who agrees with that? For the for things we want to manifest and create, you know, we can figure out pretty much what needs to happen. Like it's it's not a super mystery. The mystery is why we don't take the correct action. And that's what's interesting. And it comes to be true that the only reason that we don't take the correct action is that the unconscious part of you has a really hard time understanding time. It is a really hard time witnessing anything else but the present moment and then the present moment and then the present moment and the present moment and then the present moment. It's a really difficult time, that critter brain, it, it, understanding uh, the flow of time. It, re it, really, it really has a hard time getting that. And so, so what happens is the unconscious doesn't understand really second, third, and fourth order consequences. It doesn't really understand that. It just thinks it feels good to spend this money. You see, it feels worse to not spend it. It feels good to eat this food full of, uh, you know, salt and fat and sugar and this, and it feels good. And this hardwiring that we have to move towards pleasure and away from pain misses the fact that there's actually a big pleasure waiting or even a big pain actually down the track, you see? And it doesn't matter how logically we know that if we do this action, we're going to get to here. It's the unconscious hasn't caught up. Does that make sense? The unconscious hasn't caught up that this action is actually painful. And once I actually flipped it and I was able to teach my unconscious that eating that food isn't what I want, it isn't where I want to go, and, and spending more than I make isn't what I want to do. It's actually not my choice. My choice is that once I was able to reassociate the truth to the future pain, the future truth, and bring it back to the now. So why this can happen is that your unconscious isn't experiencing the future dissatisfaction. It's only experiencing the, the current satisfaction. So the process we can go through is to regain this future dissatisfaction and bring it here and let the unconscious know what the truth is of that action. How does that sound? So then the unconscious, instead of making the decision on just what's here in the present moment, it receives the second, third, fourth, fifth order consequences. And the unconscious understands all the consequences of the decision. Therefore, you make correct decisions on all different levels. Does that sound good? So your action and behavior is the highest form of communication, the highest form of information.
If you want to know whether the work that we're doing together is working, if you'd like to understand if someone else that you might be working with has actually created shifts, there's only one place to look, action. If they can do things that they weren't able to do before, if their body is able to heal in ways it wasn't able to heal before, if they're able to now public speak or to take that course or have that conversation, if different action is able to be had, then we can see that resistance was mounted. Action is the only form of uh, the highest form of, of uh, communication. That's the most important thing to realize and understand is, is the way that I'm being has that shifted, the way that I'm feeling, the way that I'm talking, the way that I'm thinking. These are all actions. Are these different? That's how we know. And so the goal for today is to teach our unconscious the truth of the action it's taking or avoiding. So that instead of just basing the action on how it feels today, because it feels much better to avoid having the tough conversation, feels much better to have not have the tough conversation and let the relationship have resentment. It feels much better today. But six months, 12 months, 18 months down the track, guess what? Not speaking up when the when the uh, when there was a, a small challenge leads to this really big problem down here. And if you actually were to to zoom out and ask which one would you rather, the small one you would always rather. Same with a health problem. Same with a a money problem. Here is where it needs to be handled. But when we're here at the beginning, at the now, we don't associate all of the. Uh, negative dissatisfaction that might come with it. Does that make sense? So what we want to do is we want to take, and also the pleasure, so opposite. We don't associate all the pleasure that would come of a different action. All we do is we, we base our action on what feels good now from an unconscious perspective. Does that make sense? This is all from an unconscious. I'm not talking about conscious. I'm talking about your unconscious learning just how good or bad it would be to have certain actions. Does this make sense? So I know that my unconscious seeks survival. It, it seeks to keep me alive. It will move towards pleasure and away from pain. But if I, if I look back a lot of times, it's confused or not feeling the truth because the pleasure that it's feeling is just the current pleasure and it's ignoring the future dissatisfaction or vice versa. It's feeling the current dissatisfaction and ignoring the future pleasure. So I want you to get this. Your unconscious moves away from pain and towards pleasure. It just doesn't account for all the future pain and pleasure associated with that decision. Does that make sense? So we're going to do a process that I go through a lot with myself, which is teaching my unconscious the truth of it. And so today we're going to do inner fire. We're going to do the inner fire process. Who's done inner fire before? Give me a yes if you have and give me a, a, a no if it's your first one. We're going to use the inner fire process. So some of you uh, are going to have a great first experience of it. Some of you already know. So when you imagine a time uh, when you've been at a, you know, at a funeral before, someone's funeral, someone that you care about, someone you knew that very, very deeply. And I just want you to imagine for a second that, uh, you know, that, that you're there. Uh, and, and funerals are a very interesting time. You know, there's always that sense of, you know, what's lost, but also that, that reverence or that remembering of the person and all the good and beautiful things and the memories and just imagine for a second, uh, you know, that you're at a funeral of someone that you care about deeply, like really deeply. And just, you know, just associate to that. And imagine walking in, you know, and you might close your eyes if you want to do this really quickly. It's small, you don't have to. Imagine walking in and 
you know, your family are there or people you care about, people you know, they're all there. And, you know, there's a seat for you and it's kind of up the front and, and you see people, people you don't know. And you have that, you know, that the smell, there's flowers uh, there and you, you, you feel that feeling of everyone and you hear the sort of the whispers. And, and you, you get up there and you get at the front and, uh, you know, the, you, you feel an intention that you need to, you know, go look at the casket and, and pay your wishes. And, and so just imagine you sort of line up, there's a few other people there and you're feeling respectful and everything else. And, and uh, you know, you're, 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 you're being as you should be and you, you walk up uh, to the casket and, you, you, you know, you look down and as you look down, you, you realize it's you. It's you. And so this hits you a little bit that you're actually at your own funeral. And so you notice all of a sudden that like other people are able now just to walk through you. You're there at this time we're all going to have. And just and just just keep staying with this and just imagine you go back and you, you take your seat. And you kind of start to take it in. But then the question comes into your mind. You know, what are people going to say about me? How did I look? What are they going to share about my life? What would I love at this point for, for my impact to be? And just, and just really, really allow that to, to, to sit in your unconscious to know that, that between this point and that point, there's a lot of choices you get to make. Each choice builds on itself. Each decision, each behavior builds on itself. And, and little decisions over a long time create very different paths. And our unconscious, a lot of the time, is playing against that which we would really like to create. Hey, Chris here again. I hope you really enjoyed that session. Obviously, it was streamed live to our Magnet Mind Masterclass uh, coaching program. If you'd like to be involved in that program, please do reach out. Uh, we do have spaces you can uh, apply for and you can join. So do let us know if it's something for you. And again, thank you so much for your support. Subscribe, like, and share this content so we can reach millions of people just like you and help them become conscious creators. Have a great day. Stay super conscious.